so happy to see all of you. Um, I'm here now to talk about seven Facebook strategies, and that's into my mission of actually helping other journal businesses grow to showcase what we're doing and see if you can get some ideas and examples for you to grow your business. And it's also for growing not your business by attracting more customers for you, but it's also maybe something that you can add on to your service base and help your client a little bit more. With. These are my Twitter handles if you want to use them. <coughs> so Facebook, a lot of my clients says when I say we should do some Facebook marketing, they say, well, my clients are not on Facebook. How many of you are on Facebook? Huh. Almost everyone. Okay. And, and I think that that's the impression sometimes that we think that you have to be on LinkedIn or you have to be on a professional network to actually do business. It's actually not true. In Facebook right now, currently, we have 1.2 billion logins into Facebook every single day. That's how many users that, that logs in every single day. Do, they, do you think that they have their hat on saying, hey, I am a business owner or I'm a private citizen right now? They don't, they're one and the same. So you can meet them there. If you look at the next one, this is Facebook Messenger. How many of you are using Facebook Messenger? Yeah. So chat functionality has kind of been replaced or the SMS functionality that we have used before has actually been replaced by chats. And Facebook, since we are actively on Facebook, it's easy to get started with Messenger as well. And that's why we have 1.2 billion monthly active users. And that's a different communication channel that has changed a lot the past year. A year ago, when they had their developer conference for Facebook, they said that they will open up the API for developers to actually create Facebook bots. Facebook Messenger bots. And everybody was like, whoa, hooray, that was going to be awesome. We can automate a lot of communication. At the same time, the API was not that stable. It was not that full-fledged yet when they were announcing it. So they worked a lot for the past six months or so uh, with a lot of bot developers and created the first kind of bot platforms. And I'm going to talk about that today throughout my presentation because I think that Facebook now has opened up a new possibility for us as marketing people, as business owners, as communicators to communicate in real time with our customers and those that are interested in what we provide to them. Because it's easy, it's in their phone, and it has an open rate that is just unbelievable. So if you think of email marketing being really, really a good way of communicating with your clients, it is. This is not replacing it, but it's actually really, really good for actually having a, another channel to use for a different purpose. If you look at the same numbers for Facebook, they have monthly media, monthly logins of 1.94 billion people that log in every month. So it's pretty much a lot of people, right? And every single time when we go into Facebook, the average person has a visit of 20 minutes. How many posts and how many things could you see in 20 minutes? And a lot of people log in 20 minutes multiple times a day. Every single day, 300 million photos is uploaded to Facebook. And every single minute, more than half a million comments are placed. More than 300,000 status updates are done every single minute. That's why you don't no longer see everything in your newsfeed. Remember when we started and logged in and we could see everything that happened to anyone and we can sort out the whole day? Now we don't because we have to have a filtering system that actually is just replay, like visualization of what I really, really are interested in. So when you are scrolling down on your mobile or on your desktop, if you stay on a post for a certain amount of time, Facebook knows that you've been interested in that kind of sub subject or topic. If you clicked on something, they know. If you liked on something, they know. 
and they will give you more and more of those things in your newsfeed. And you will see less and less things that you're just scrolling by. And since they're so crowded, we need to be very smart when we communicate. Because if you're going to be one of those people that are communicating in Facebook and in Messenger, we need to be smart and strategic on how we do it. If we train our people that are our audience to actually stay and read, actually to click and like and share, then they will see more and more of our posts. If we are uninterested, if they don't feel like we have something really interesting for them to showcase, they will never look at it, they will never stay it, and then we, they will never see it. So even if you say, hey, I have 300 likes on my Facebook page, that's my company page. Those 300 don't see everything that you post. So that's the problem that I'm gonna address today, how we can do smarter. The first thing that you should do is go to business .facebook.com and you should make your own business account to Facebook. This is super important for you to actually utilize Facebook as a business. How many of you have, have a business account? Okay, so come a few. Okay. The most important reason is that if you want to co cooperate with someone about it, you don't have to share something that's private for you. You can have multiple different logins with different roles into your Facebook account. And that's important if you are a business where you have support staff, maybe you have moderators, maybe you have admins, then it's easy for you to share your responsibilities. And if you have an agency helping you, it's easy for us to say, hey, you don't have to share anything else except for the login. You can just give me access to your Facebook account, that's your business account. And the client will be more satisfied and happy that they don't have to share other things with you. When you have that, I also think that you should have a certain amount of apps in your mobile phone. It's going to make it easier for you to manage your Facebook for business. You have the regular Facebook app, and then you have something called Pages, which is for the business pages. And then you have the um, Messenger, and then you have something called Groups. And that's going to make it much more easy for you to, to, to manage the signs. I talked about the bots of Facebook. I have tried several ones and I have decided to use ManyChat. ManyChat is a cloud service. So you go into ManyChat and sign up for an account and you authorize it to be able to use it with your Facebook pages that you would like to share with them. The reason why I use ManyChat is because it has a really, really good interface to work with. It's easy to manage and it's also easy to share. It's free, so you don't have to pay for it if you don't want to. If you want to take away the branding that they have in their communication, you pay a few bucks. It's not expensive. When you use ManyChat, it actually is a subscriber functionality in Facebook Messenger. So if someone is saying something to you in Facebook Messenger, having a conversation with you, they automatically are a subscriber of Facebook Messenger. And you can do subscriptions broadcast into Facebook Messenger to every single one of them. ManyChat also gives you the opportunity to do workflows. So you can start a conversation with someone and you can ask them questions and since they click on buttons that you have put together in a certain flow they will get certain different kinds of responses so if you look at it it's like an auto responsive email but it's actually auto responsive facebook messenger i'm going to showcase some of my cases i've been using this for so it's going to be much more clear for you but i want you to know why i use it and why i think it's an awesome tool to use and if you're not using it you're missing out on something really cool it's not just cool for the user because i'm going to showcase what they write as a response when they get into that experience um, it's actually really a profitable channel to work with but again you have to be smart otherwise more and more people are using the bots and if you don't use them in the right way people will unsubscribe 
and you cannot communicate with them anymore. So let's start with the first strategy I promised you. The first one is to have at least one Facebook page for your business. And when I say at least one, if you have multiple avatars or multiple services, you should probably have different Facebook pages for those people because otherwise you're not relevant. If you have seven different things that you do, like Facebook advertising, and then you do CEO, and then you do something else, and it's not relevant for the whole group, it's better to split them up. Remember what I said in the beginning, if they don't absorb the information and communication that you give them, they will no longer be interested to get that information that could be interesting for them if yes, every other five post is interesting for them. So keep it relevant. The Facebook pages is to create them. It's easy. They, on, almost every page there is like create a page. And you choose what kind of category that page is going to be like. If it's going to be a local business or if it's going to be a community. What is it? <coughs> then you figure out who in your business will moderate. Will you share it with your clients? Will your staff be able to help you out? What are you going to do? <coughs> So that they are called moderators. And then you have to have a plan on how to handle and manage the page. So if you have a communication plan with blog plan, what you're blogging about, or a communication plan on how you do social media, you should also have one for how to manage your page. How are you gonna deal with comments? How are you gonna deal with inboxes that comes with communication from the, the visitors? And really think of how to do the page in the right way. Have an attractive look and feel to it, information that's interesting. If you have people coming from different audience, from different languages, it's important that you can actually say, I want to have my page in different languages. So you can put your post in French and in English. And if I'm having a French version of Facebook, I will see the French posts. If, not there, if there's not two posts for the same issue, I will see the English or the main language that you chose. So your page can actually be multilingual. So it says setting in the settings too. So you just check it out. Be clear on where you are and what you do. Uh, I think the one of the most important things that I do is that in the file up here, you should change that not to be an email, but it should be something going into Facebook messaging send the message. Every single time someone does that, they approve you to be communicating with them in Facebook Messenger. And that's powerful. So don't take it. Use that advantage that you have. Okay, so if someone clicks on our, our page over there and say, hey, I'm gonna send a message. This is what they get from something that we set up as an autoresponders. And you can do that in Facebook natively if you want to have an autoresponder. But we use ManyChat because we want them to be able to have an experience with us. This is kind of tiny, so I'm going to read what it says. It says, welcome, thank you for reaching out to our support team. Uh, they do the best they can to respond ASAP and will answer any and all questions as timely as humanly possible. But in the meantime, would you, uh, we would love to know if you could tell us a little bit more about yourself by selecting any of these options. We're segmenting the people that comes into our messaging. So they click on something there and they come into an experience that we will share something to them, maybe a video or maybe a white paper or something. And when the, my support team is reaching out to them, they already have an opportunity to know us a little bit more. How do you add these options? They are made in the mini chat. It's a really easy UX to say, hey, I want to have a button, or I want to have a link, or I want to have something else. And then you say, if they click this, they should have this tag to be segmented, and this is now the response that's going to be sent into this. So that's an easy way to set that up, to segment them, to start with. If you have, it's like if you call to a bigger corporation, and they say, press one to come to the support, press two to come to invoicing, press three to, come to the sales department. This is the same kind of thing. And then you can have a team that actually can respond to different things neatly. So Facebook groups is my second thing. I think that we are not utilizing that enough. 
you can use it for so many different things. Um, you can build leads in Facebook by using groups. If you think about we as a Joomla people, how many of you are me uh, like in the Joomla group in Facebook? Almost everyone. Okay. So if I'm talking about Joomla and I'm doing posts on Joomla, I will have suggestions to join different groups that actually has to do with Joomla globally. And someone will join just to learn more. So if you are interested in Facebook bots, for example, and you start doing Facebook bots and talking about them, you get so many Facebook groups that talk about Facebook bots and they showcase how they do it and where you can sign up and what you can do. And it's really, really good for leads to let to know more what you're talking about. So if you're talking about SEO or email marketing, or if you're talking about Joomla support, or create a group and people will find that group and they will join it and they will get to know you. And if they're interested in buying your service, they will reach out to you. And the really, really good thing about groups is that you get notifications. If you have a Facebook page, you might not get all the information, but you do when you have the, with the groups. So you can reach out and connect to people faster and more often and more frequently. The same thing here, you can have a lot of different groups um, and you can manage them and have moderators. It's important for you to have guidelines so you know how to kick people out of your group if they misbehave. It's easy, it's like a place where you just put some text but everybody has to apply to it. It's easy for the moderators to take the hard decision to kick someone out. Um, another thing that we use Facebook groups for is that we have online trainings and we then say you have a Facebook group included in your online training so you can talk to your peers about the online training where you are and ask them what they think and like have a peer group of other people so it's like a virtual classroom of networking and we can they can share links and they can share cases so we don't have to do everything we moderate and make that available for them and empower them we don't have to teach in that group <coughs> we use it for some support cases that we have all the users of some of our extensions have a group so they can go in there and talk to, to each other and find out more things so they don't have to log into an external forum and they have to go in there and watch so this is more like an interaction that actually is ongoing conversation Something that's pretty new uh, is that they took away uh, the polling functionality in the page sections. And now you can only do it in groups. So if you want to survey people that are attracted to a group, you have to talk about the topic that you're providing services to. If you don't know your persona, if you don't know your avatar, you don't know how the pricing points will be, you can ask in tons of questions in polls and people would love to like respond to it as a survey. And you get to know more about your clients and then you can provide the better content to them. Ask them what kind of video would they see, like to see next? What kind of training would they like to see? Ask them what they you should provide so you provide the right things. In the Facebook groups, um, I think it was this week, yeah, uh, they added something called units. So if you use a group that you say, hey, this is a school, or here, this is an education group. You can now put in a training, a whole online training in the Facebook group with units and scholarship. You can give points so you can say, yeah, you pass this section and this section, this section. So now you don't have to have actually an, an online training if you don't want to. You can just use the Facebook group. And that's, I think it's a really good thing. Okay, so post. Post can be text, images, videos events, links, comments, reactions. It's not pushed too much into the user feed, like one tenth maybe, even less sometimes if you don't interact with people. So that it's hard. Making posts today is hard. It's not a free game anymore that it was in the beginning. So you have to be smart and think about what the main goal for Facebook is. The main goal for Facebook is it's earning money on what we do to create content and our usage of it so they can sell advertising. And to sell as much advertising and impressions and everything else, they need us to be on the platform. So everything when you send people out of the platform is not pushed into the newsfeed. So if you think of you have a Facebook post and you add a link to YouTube to showcase a video training. 
they're not going to show that to your users because they're going to bring them out of Facebook friends. So if you have videos on YouTube, upload them on Facebook natively. Okay? If you have a blog that you really like on your page, put that blog also in instant articles functionality in your page. Because then people are going to stay in Facebook, they come to an instant article, it showcases much faster and loaded so much faster. You can have really good advertising for yourself into that instant article, and this is going to be pushed into newsfeed more often. So try not to, to get everything else, to get traffic outside Facebook if you want to go there. Yeah? Yeah, it doesn't get uh, duplicated content. No. There's because no, it's closed yeah. inside Facebook. Yeah, the same thing actually is the same thing for LinkedIn. You can have your face, like you can take your blog post and put that into uh, the LinkedIn publishing tool that they have. They are not going to be duplicated because they are not indexed the same way. So don't worry about that. Uh, we use a lot of things that we want pe our people that follow us to feel like, I would like to be take part of that, or I was part of that, I want to see more. So we take a lot of pictures of our clients and our sessions and everything else and display them on Facebook. They tag each other and they're happy to share and that gives us a more reachability. Um, in this we had a mingling in our office where I have mini seminars in the evening. We have some wine and some food and some meeting ups and we just have a good time. Uh, and then people would like to see what that was. And then people send uh, quotes and referrals to us and that's what I post. I put all the like, hey, I was there last time and this gave me this kind of epiphany and now I did this. So I take that quote and I put that in there and they can see what other people think. And because I do that, they share that to other people. <coughs> so think of how you can make shareable content that actually works. Post regularly, but have a plan with the end goal in mind. If you were at my seminar uh, the first day of JAB, I talked about the current state and the destination. Think of what you can help them with to go through that and help them go this way. So videos, we put all our YouTube videos on Facebook as well. Of course, otherwise we will not have the visibility. Um, yeah? Reported. The video started on Facebook or linked to YouTube? Uh, not linked to YouTube, okay. natively uploaded. Okay. It's really, really important. Yeah. Facebook Live is even better to push newsfeed out there. So do a lot of Facebook Live. People love to see what, how your office looks like. When you're thinking of doing something new, showcase maybe something on your screen that, oh, I'm working on this one, or I found this neat feature, or like, what is it for you? And give that energy into Live. Because everybody that goes into your Live mode, they can actually uh, subscribe to your Live feeds. So they get a little pop up and say, hey, this person is now live and people will be joining you faster since then. So do a lot of live. That's a really good strategy. Customer support. How many books have you live? I mean, doing a live session for free people is not that... Oh, you, do, you can do it for no people. You can do it for no people. You should not say, hey, I'm waiting until more people join. Forget about it. You have three, four seconds to get that person that actually comes there to get excited to stay. So you can't say, oh, I, we're going to wait until more people join. No. Just say, hey, this is my name, this is my message, this is what I'm going to train on right now, and then just go. Because the most people that are going to view this are people that are going to see the replay. And they don't want to wait because they are listening, listening to a replay. Yep. And um, do you just give your customers or fans um, an insight to your office, or do you really Value in, in I do valuable content. I do mini seminars. I can say, hey, like I did now with the uh, group and the units that you can have an online thing, an online training in Facebook and you don't have to have another platform for it. If I find something like that, I, I put myself out and say, hey, I just read on this site about this and this and I looked into it and I just went into my group and I saw these things and checked that out and I'm just showcasing my, my screen. So if you have something like that that's interesting, go in and log in and see if you have it already yourself. So people like that we are like on top of things, we, we package it very like small. But in the end, you want to charge for your uh, 
Yeah, because then, yeah, but okay. then they come to us and say, hey, do you know what, online training, maybe I can pack, package my, my knowledge. Right now, I'm only coaching and speaking. Maybe I can actually do some online, coach, online coaching. How would that work? And then we have a strategy session. We help them with outlining their trainings. They go about doing the training, and we help them with marketing of the training. So, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Will you be posting this video on your Facebook? Yes. No, not this video. No. I don't because this is not my content. Right. Okay. So if I if I ask Jab, maybe they will do that for us. But what they what I can do is actually just share Jab's uh, video to my page. Well, that is an external link, isn't it? Does that then mean it doesn't get? Included? I don't know if they have posted them to Facebook or only to YouTube, but they should do it to YouTube too. Oh, they so like so both to both of them. Yeah, to make it easier for us to distribute because they're going to have more visibility if they did. But I have no idea how they do it. Um, and we have had some keynotes, and some of the keynotes have been Facebook Live here. And so I think that's a really good thing. Okay, so let's go back to customer support. Uh, this link is my ManyChat link to our Pixel Labs Messenger. I can use this everywhere. I can use this in my newsletters that I sent out. I can use that in my PowerPoint like this. Or I can use it when I am writing a blog post. I can have it on my product page saying, hey, if you have any questions about this, send me a message. So this is a short link and it's the same thing as the button you had on the, uh, on the Facebook page. ManyChat also has this kind of displays that you can have on your page. So the yellow bar over there, it says, questions, click here and ask, send a message. If I'm logged in, in Facebook, my, my name comes in and my avatar from Facebook comes in. If I'm logged in with the wrong account, I can change my account and then I can send a message. So that's easy to, to get in contact. This is a product-specific bot that I've built. Uh, it's uh, something that someone is on our Pix Tracker page. And we have a, like a button there saying, hey, are you interested in having questions? Click here. And that doesn't go to the main link that I just showed you. This is going to a specific so they get tagged that they are interested in this product. And then I'm then having a reply automatically that sends immediately saying, Hey, John, thank you for your interest in Pix Tracker, our script manager for Joomla extension and uh, for subscribing to our messenger feed. I'm a PixBot and I will guide you through until you uh, write human. I will be happy to uh, call on my human colleagues at pix labs to uh, take over the conversation. You can also write stop in any time and form you want to, to just no, have no conversation with me any longer. Okay, let's start. Please let me know if, um, let me know a little bit about yourself so I can uh, serve you the best. And then I have two options. It says, I am not, a user yet or I am a user so you can use all the emotion icons and you can do this in a really good way and you have to do it in a fun way in a natural language it should be feeling like you write an email to someone or you write a message to someone it's just that you don't have to do this repeatedly over and over again you just make it automatically so someone clicked on our big uh, big button on the uh, Facebook uh, page to send a message and then got this hey about like we waiting for the support guys to join you and blah 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 and then the response was hi Sarah I was curious how this worked it's awesome is this something your company did custom or is this functionality that actually I can find somewhere online so they don't think about that they talk to a bot they just think that they are talking to something but we didn't want to be luring or faking it. That's why we created PixBot. So we say, hey, I'm the bot. I'm going to help you and guide you. I'm going to be this traffic controller for you. I'm going to serve you. 
And as soon as you say human, someone else will pop in. To try this out, we did a competition and we actually created an icon for an avatar for our pick spot. We um, decided to uh, do a competition where we gave away 50 bundles of our products for free. And uh, this was our Facebook post saying, hey, the only thing that you have to do is to go in into the comments and write spring, which was our keyword, or you open up the you click on, it, uh, on this link and you click open up messenger and write spring. What happens then was that this came up. So the bot just waits for get started, which is the keyword that we have. So if you have like a, like a competition, you can use whatever word you would like to have as a keyword. So it says, hey, welcome Sarah. And it was like applause. Uh, thank you for reaching out and supporting doing this and this. In the meantime, let us know if you're an extension you would like to have help me. Or maybe you would like to enter our swim contest where we have uh, select 50 lucky winners that get it for free. Just check spring and follow the instructions. And also talk about how you can unsubscribe. And here's another one coming from the, uh, from the ad itself saying, Hi Sarah, I'm Pixbot and I will guide you through this contest. Congratulations, you have completed the first step to enter into our spring contest. The next step is to tell me in 20 words why you would like to be one of the 50 lucky <coughs> winners. And then it says, yeah, okay, I'm ready. And then with some people saying, no, I change my mind. And in Sweden, we have a, a law that we cannot have a contest just by saying spring. If we were in the US, that would be fine. But in Sweden, we have to have something that actually, it's not a lottery, but it actually is something that we can evaluate. And that's why we have to have something that they have to explain something in kind of 20 words of this. So then next one, okay, I'm ready. And then it says, oh, I'm secure that I can burst. Why should you be one of the 50 winners? And then that person wrote something in the top on there on their, and saying, hey, awesome. Thank you for completing your contest entry. The winner will be announced in this and this way. Uh, we will be contacting the winner and uh, he will be uh, happy to be able to get this invitation. So all, all this is uh, automatized? This is not advertising. This is used in many in no, no, no. chats. Autom automatically. Yeah. Yes, exactly. <coughs> Depending on the keyboards that yes. you interact with. And you can put in information like first name, last name, and all a lot of different placeholders from the people. But it works also when someone type nonsense like this, or? Why? I mean, the, the blue box, yep. there is nothing. He posts, it's just funny letters. <coughs> yeah, I know. And so. that's just for my purpose of, they could do anything. Because you can say in 20 words anything. Yeah, but the bot will always um, be sending the same message back. Or no, we have, you, you have different versions of, we were looking for different keywords. So in this case, this is just a screenshot because I took away the original message that was there because I didn't want to showcase anyone. Okay. Uh, but otherwise, if that information, that waited for someone to actually approve that through the keywords that was in it. Okay. Otherwise, it was like, no, this is too few words, or you have to. Are you sure that this is the entry that you want? So that means you need someone from your employees to have a look at it. At Either that concept. you can do that, or you can have a bot saying that it's looking for different things that you set up as requirements. Okay. Yeah. And um, sorry. Yes. Yeah. Um, I mean, the purpose of that contest is uh, to get in contact with possible customers. Yeah. And then uh, contact them. Maybe later. So, yeah. are you doing this inside your export universal, or do you extract the contact mm. information and use it otherwise? Yeah. The trick is that Facebook is not going to share contact mm. information with you. Okay, so you have to do. It I have to use ManyChat, but ManyChat, when people have said I'm in, I would like to be in conversation with you in Messenger, you can keep on broadcasting to them. Okay. So my next response was, I wish you the best of luck. Uh, this is what comes, I'm curious, what would you like to do next? So now I have all these people that come in and say, hey, I'm kind of interested in Joomla, otherwise I would not be interested in actually have compete for something. They competed and now I have them in my pool of database in Messenger that I can talk to as an audience. And then I'm just asking, what do you want to do next? 
serving them on the customer journey. Maybe that's the first time they ever heard, talk, heard about us. And we want them to be, okay, do you want to explore the blog and read more things that could be interesting for you? Would you like to see the products that we have? Would you like to download an infographic on how you can be a better marketer? So people clicked on that and then they were segmented. So. But you say you don't have access to name or Name, email. absolutely. You have name and you have the avatar, you have the face of persons and everything else. You just don't have the email address and the contact information. Okay. Because I'm thinking I have a small web shop and I add a, a soaping, a soaping the plugin to chat yep. instead of uh, an email. Mm -hmm. When people have a product question on a product page, they use that. Yep. It has an offline feature. So when I'm not online, I just get an email and transfer it. And that, that works perfectly. Yeah. And then I get the email. And I, I like that. Yeah. Many chat is the, many chat is using the API of, of of Facebook, and Facebook is actually not giving out the email. So your shop, if someone has any question, they have actually provided in the in yeah. the loop. They have provided an email address yeah, the themselves. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so that's totally different. These are people that have never given us the email address. They just gave it to Facebook. So you have to be smart of that case. Would you like to download our white paper? Yes. Then you go to the website to fill in your email and information, and now we're on our broadcast list. Okay, just just from uh, quick. Um, do you get any more demographic information about these? The person? Yeah. yeah, you get the country and you get a lot of things. Okay. And you can then segment them based yeah. on that as well, or language, or so there's a lot of things I can do. And they add continuously new features. So every single time I log in, there's new things that I can do. Okay, so here was the broadcast that we did. We selected our 50 winners and we sent out the broadcast to them in mini chat. So we just said, hey, everybody here, they have the chance of winning, 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 winner. And then we said, okay, let's let's send that out. So, so we did that in batches. So we sent 17 in this example. 17 was delivered. We don't have a problem with fake email addresses here. So we have them. 94% uh, open, yes, within a few minutes. And uh, is almost 76 people just clicked on the link to, to get their things. And you get all the CTR and all the measurement points that you would like to have as a marketer to provide to your clients. This is people who already contact you and you save them in a database and then you re send them a new message? Yeah, they didn't contact us. They contacted us through Messenger. Yeah, yeah. And we just say, hey, all these people that we have in the Messenger right now, we're going to send this to them but it's a segmented part of them. If you just have Messenger natively, you can just send to one at a time. Yeah. And you can have a conversation, right? Now I can send to one too many. How many took part in this competition? A lot. <laughs> so it, it's smart. It's a really good lead gen. People yeah. love quizzes, people love contests. I, I'm wondering, I mean, quite cool, but it only works if you have users that do it. And how do you get these users to say do it? Yeah, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this was the explanation, and uh, and then, and uh, yeah, this was one. That was a person that did a like 20 words of why they should win, and then we didn't come back to them immediately because we were reviewing them manually at that time, uh, and then they say, hey, are you still there, Pixbot? Because everything was so instant. So they didn't say, hey, were you there? They really re realized and remembered that we used the word pick spot in the first couple of messages. So it's a kind of a funny thing too, to think of people enjoy that journey. Is it, is it possible to do it if, if I have the, the, like you said, in several languages, the page, we have it in several languages. Is it possible to do it like with one command having the translation of the text doing this in several languages? Yeah. Yeah. Because you can have different links and different posts. So you have a post in French, and then you have a link that is for the French competition. Yeah. And then you have a workflow for the and the communication is set up for that okay. for that language. Absolutely. Perfect. So that this happened, people started screen share they had screenshotting at that they were winning, and they posted it on their page that they were winning. So people came with me and said, "Hey, I want to be part of that competition. Are you going to run it again?" I was like, no, not yet. <laughs> but yeah. And Mike said, he got in and said, hey, I won too. So people started having a conversation about that. In ManyChat, you can also use that for RSS feeds creation. So you can say, if someone is interested in having your blog sent to them, instead of emailing them, 
you can have an RSS feed saying, hey, there's a new article or in my blog. And that can be automatically done like that. So I think that that is uh, something that I feel super excited about. You can actually provide this as a service to your client. They might not even know that they can do this. If you go into CNN, if you go into the major news feeds and you click on their me send message, they probably most of them have this now. If I go to a store, like uh, a, a store for clothes, they usually have that now. So it helps you to get a good view of what's available and for you. You like that? Yeah. I just wonder, the RSS feed, is yeah. it from message uh, uh, box or is it from uh, Facebook, group uh, Facebook page? So you can choose whatever RSS feed you like. If it's from your Joomla website, from that category <coughs> of your blog that people have been showing interest to, you can just do a short link and say, hey, if you're interested in blogs in this topic with this tag, click on this and say this keyword. Then they will put on a subscription list so they will get all the information in Messenger when there is a new blog post. So you get it from the Java blog? Yeah. yeah. Or you can choose another RSS feed from another kind of source. So, but, so that actually is going to help your clients if they have a Joomla website to actually attract more people to their Joomla website back. And as I said before, the the uh, subscription for ManyChat is free if you don't want to take out the branding. And then you can pay for traffic. So now we're back to your question. Who will be actually part of this? Uh, so we have to decide to sell something if you're going to advertise, right? And you want to know who you're going to like advertise to by knowing your avatar. You need to know where you're going to get them. Are they going to buy? Are they going to download? What are they going to do? Or are they just going to be subscriber in Messenger so you can continue talking to them? What's your end goal? And where are they right now? So if they are in Facebook, you can go in and say, if they like the Joomla pages. So we did that. We said, okay, we're going to showcase some, some ads uh, that is going to help us showcase our contest to people that actually like any Joomla pages on, in Facebook. And then we pay for that traffic. So what you need to do is set up an ad account. You do that in business.facebook.com. You set up audiences, which means that you set up a list of people that you can take your list of your subscribers. If you have email addresses and phone numbers, you can upload that to Facebook and say, I want to advertise on Facebook to them. Or you can buy a list and do the same. Or you can say, everybody that visited my website for the past 180 days, I would like to advertise to them. So figure out who your avatar is, is really important. Um, and then you should set up Facebook pixels. Do you know what a Facebook pixel is? Yeah. No? Okay. So it's a tracking code, it's a script uh, that you go into the business of Facebook.com and say pixel and you create a pixel and that's a JavaScript and you put that in your website. And then you can go into the ads manager and set up audiences and saying, if everybody that comes to this page with this URL will be one audience. If they have come to our product page but not to our checkout page, then that's another audience. Or if they've been to our putting things into the basket of our shopping cart but they didn't check out, that's an audience. <coughs> In Facebook, you can also say, I want, to, I want to advertise to everyone that is, has approved me to talk to them in Messenger. You can do that. But that's expensive. ManyChat doesn't cost anything to have contact with them. So be smart. Um, so we, we are selling Pix Tracker, And this is how we use our cookie code that comes from, from Facebook. We wrote a lot of blog articles how to do this in templates and other kind of extensions as well. So you can see exactly how you create your pixel and how you can implement it. If you use ours, you get just go in and say, hey, I have a new code. You paste the code in, you go to the article that you would like to put it in or the menu option, and you just choose from the list. So you don't have to repurpose it all the way. You just have it once and you manage it from there. Here was our advertising that we did for all the people that loved Julia. <coughs> 
So if they like your page, or if they like Joomla in general, or your page for hosting, or something else that we can actually trigger, then those people were then exposed to our message. So think about that, you can actually advertise to your competitors. If your avatar likes to read a certain magazine, you can advertise to those people that like that magazine. This is so super slim. So you just talk and uh, talk to the people that you really, really want to pay for. So there is no overlap, there is no wasted money. So this is how it looks like when you advertise inside Messenger. So people that was messaging us before ManyChat was implemented, we wanted to get them into ManyChat and start a conversation with them. So we had to then start them over. But now everybody is in ManyChat and we can still talk to them. Was there a difference between the two ads? Yeah, it was a difference. I can tell you, uh, I, we do a lot of split testing. So the uh, <coughs> right one was winning by far, by clicks. And uh, there's a Joomla logo, there is this chatbot thing, so people were more interested in more things to, to the think. The design is really more appealing you know, in this right side, I think. Yeah. So, and we can also see that we had more reach. Because in uh, Facebook, when people are looking at things, even if they don't click, they, want, they see that. So they showcase that ad better and more often because they see it's more interesting for my audience that I put. Okay. okay, so these are the tools that we use. We use Google Analytics so we can see how things are performing when we send people to our website so we can see what, what kind of posts they came from, what kind of place in Facebook they came from, so we know where we're going to spend our time. Uh, we have Canva as our go-to tool uh, to do great graphics. And we use Meet Edgar or Sendable to do all our posts that we would like to schedule. So when I'm here, I don't have to do anything because it's already pre-scheduled, right? So it's doing it once and then set it and then you can go in and add more if you want to. <coughs> we use also Pixcook Restrict, which is one of our extensions to safeguard all the scripts that are in the tracker because you cannot post them on EU law required sites. Yes, too. You cannot. So if you put that into a template, you're actually breaking the law. Um, so you have to figure out a way to do it, and we, we just did it because we needed to have that for our clients. Um, so if you want to check that out, you could. If you go to this website and sign up, I will send you templates, I will send you more tools, I will send you more tutorials on what the topic was for today, and also what I did for the content marketing made easy session. So you're gonna be, more in the loop and have more things and you will be able to see more cases that we, we do to get inspired to do it yourself for your business, to grow your Joomla business because that's what's important for me. Uh, and I think it's important for you too. And you can do it by growing your customer base. You can earn more money. You can have more services. And even if you don't want to have that service to your clients, at least you know about that that service exists. And you can find someone that you can say to your client, you know what, dear client, I don't do it, but I have someone that can do it for you. You will be the expert that they like to come to and ask for different referrals for different cases. And that would make you look good and you will keep your client longer. Okay. Yeah. Um, it looks like a lot of work that you and your team spend on all this to figure out how it works and everything. Did you ever? made a comparison between the amount of work that you spend and the income that you get from these app kind of advertising. Yeah. And if so, is it reliable for you? Or because is there a customer saying, I found you on Facebook and here is that what you I want you to do for me or is that um, I saw your website by searching searching with Google and then I found you on Facebook as well or so we have tracking systems that says this is how what keyword actually gave, gave us a client. These are keywords that people search for on Google that actually gave us a lead. Mm -hmm. uh, we can say that certain keywords gives us more profitable company, clients that stay longer and pay more and buy more of us. And we know exactly mm -hmm. what Facebook post actually converts more. Like it's on that detailed level. So yes, I know my numbers. You should too. 
And when you talk to your clients and say, I'm going to set up this tracking for you, and we're going to see where you are right now. What's your current state? Then it's easy for you to say, do you know what, we can change this and this, and you're going to see more what's going to happen. But so iterate. But it's, I guess, very easy if you have a team behind you that can help you with all that. And if you have a Joomla one-man show or company that have to do all this work, that's probably struggling. A yeah, bit. but you don't have to do all the work. You can work with other people that do that. So if you do the website with Joomla, you can have someone else who's really, really good in search ending optimization and Google Analytics and Search Console. Yeah. And then you can have another person that it's not that your employee, but it's your partner in a cooperation that do Facebook advertising. Mm -hmm. So that person is doing that all the time and they're really, really good at it. But you can then say, do you know what? I know where to put the codes and I know what a pixel is now and I understand all the flow, but I'm not going to do that for you because I can't do it because it's not my profession. Mm -hmm. Someone else I'm going to have it to. So you can absolutely do that. Okay. Yeah. Instead, otherwise, maybe your client will leave you and actually go to someone who has a full service agency. And that's the scary part. So if you can say, hey, dear client, stay with me and I will show you my network and I'm going to give you a really good deal. Yeah. yeah. Sounds easier as it is in real life. So. Yeah, I know. I know it's, it's not hard to run a business. It is not. But I'm trying yeah, to give right. you some tips and tricks on um, okay. what actually works. So you can start thinking of it and try and testing it yourself and see what works in your area for your customers. Okay, I'm done. Thank you so much for all the conversation.